Hello, welcome to Jumega Virtual Learning and welcome all new viewers to this channel. This is lesson four on ratio and I'm going to talk to you about how to use ratio to change recipes. Okay, let's look at example one. We have a recipe for making fish pie for six people and Anne is going to make fish pie for 15 people. We need to work out the ingredients we need for 15 people. Now, I call this scaling up the recipe in steps. As you can see, 15 is not a multiple of 6, so it's not easy to quickly change 6 into 15. Mind you, we're not using calculator. So we need to find a common number for 6 and 15, a common factor if you want to call it that way. For 6 and 15, that we can change 6 into that common number then from that common number we change it into 15 and if you look at that you can think of 3 as a common number if we create a recipe for six, 3 people we can now change 3 people into 15 so we're going to create a recipe for 3 people and how do you make 6 to become 3 by dividing it by 2 which means every ingredient that you see here will have to be divided by 2. So this is what you have. From 6 people, we now have ingredients for 3 people. Now from 3 people, it's easier to create 15 because 3 times 5 is 15. Therefore, multiply each of these ingredients by 5 and that gives you the final answer of 15 people, the ingredient for, their, for the recipe for 15 people. And if, as you can see, this is more than what we had before because we're scaling it up, but we did it in steps. Went down first to 3, then up to 15. Example 2. We have ingredient for 8 waffles and we need to make 6 waffles. Also, this is going to be scaling down because at the end, our final recipe is going to be smaller than what we had before. But usually, with calculator it's easy but this is non calculator so we have to understand that 6 is also not a multiple of 8 so we cannot just change 8 into 6 so we need to have a common ground common number for 8 and 6 common number for 8 and 6 and you know that common number will be 2 so we can create 2 waffles then from 2 waffles we change it into 6 now if you say 2 waffles then ask yourself how do you change 8 to become 2? It's by dividing it by 4. So you need to divide each of these ingredients by 4. So this is what you have for 2 waffles. Now from 2 to 6, you times it by 3 because 2 times 3 is 6. So we're going to multiply each of these ingredients by 3. So this is the final answer for six waffles and you can see these ingredients are smaller in quantity compared to the original one because it's scaling down from a to six we can also use ratio to determine the greatest number of food we can prepare from a given recipe so we're going to use this to also explain how do you determine the greatest number of food to create from a given recipe so look at this example we have ingredients for 12 shortcakes. So these are the ingredients. Spend time to pause the video and make sure you understand the context. Now Robert has 500 grams of sugar, 1000 grams of butter, 1000 grams of flour, 500 milliliters of milk. We need to work out the greatest number of shortcakes Robert can make. So as you can see, every batch of ingredients that you go to take is for 12. You can go for another batch to make 12, another batch, and so on and so on until one of these runs out. That's what the question wants you to investigate. So you can go for the first batch to make 12, the next batch to make 12, but how many batches will you be going in until not one of them is completely finished? And remember, in creating a recipe, once one recipe is off or is finished, you can carry on because you cannot create whatever you are creating when one of the ingredients is not there. 
So, as I said, each batch of ingredient is for 12 shortcakes. So, you cannot create an ingredient more than the uh, we, we cannot have one ingredient more than the other. It should be the same proportion as you see here. So, to investigate, all you need to do is to divide each of these ingredient ingredient that Robert has by the recipe. In dividing, it's like you are going for the first batch. You take fifty two hundred two hundred and ten. The next batch, 50, 200, 210, until one runs out. So when you divide, it tells you the number of batches that you can go for each of them. So let's divide and see what happens. So for sugar, you can go for 10 batches. Then it will run out. For butter, 5 batches, it runs out. Flour, 5 batches, it runs out. Milk, 50 batches, then it runs out. Now, like we said before, the batches you can go as many as you want but the fact is they will be limited by some of the ingredients you see sugar you can go for 10 batches but butter and flour five batches so that will limit the number of batches to pick from the ingredients because once you go for five batches there will be none of butter and flour and therefore you'll be left with only sugar and milk you cannot create shortcake with only these two so you have to stop so the biggest batch that you could ever pick is what? Five. But remember, each batch that you take will make how many? Twelve shortcakes. So to work out the total, we know that five five batches of butter flour, batches of butter and flour will set the limit because after five batches you are limited. Therefore, the biggest batch you could ever pick is what five remember each batch is for 12 so to know the total five times 12 that means you make short uh, cake 60 of them short cakes 60 of them so remember this method you divide the ingredient that you have by the recipe to know the number of batches that you could ever make and always the smallest number set the limit of the number of batches that you can have so you always use the smallest number let's look at our last example similar to the first one so we have ingredient for 24 almond biscuits and do you wanna have five kilograms of flour and three kilograms of butter and she assumed that the rest of ingredient she has plenty of them so no need to worry and we need to work out how the maximum number of biscuits she can make so it's similar to the first one so we need to understand that the ingredients are in grams so we need to change this also into grams like we said we need to investigate the batches of ingredients for 24 almonds so each batch of ingredient is for 24 almond biscuit each batch that we go and take this is the batch first batch 24 second batch 24 and so on and so on until we run short of uh, flour or butter so we're going to investigate also you know you cannot have one ingredient more than the other so to investigate let's convert five kilograms and three kilograms into grams 5 kilograms is 5,000 grams, 3 kilograms is 3,000 grams. So we are now going to divide the flour that Joanna has by the ingredient, the flour for ingredient. Then you divide the butter that she had by the ingredient in the menu. So flour will have 33 and a third batch butter is going to be exactly 33 grams so that's 33 batches now you realize that after 33 batch butter will be off you have a bit of flour left so the limit is set by butter and not flour so the smallest number is 33 so after 33 there will be no butter that means you cannot continue at all so 33 is the 
batch that you stop on 33 batch you stop each batch creates 24 so to work out the number of almond biscuits is 33 times 24 and that means that she can create 792 almond biscuits she can create 792 almond biscuits so that brings us to the end of the lesson on ratio so we talked about different aspects of ratio so take time to do to view all the lessons on ratio first second third and the fourth i will post a, a problem of the day question on ratio for you to also have a look at thank you very much for watching subscribe and share with your friends thank you